Right now, uh, let's go live to Mark Bukowski, uh, PR and media guru. We spoke to him at the beginning of this week when uh, the name of the BBC presenter was still unknown. Uh, let's see what he thinks of it all now since the scandal has revealed that uh, it is in fact Hugh Edwards and it was his own wife who decided to release his name uh, yesterday late afternoon. Mark, a very good morning to you. Hi, Mike. So, I mean, um, I suppose we were always going to end up in this place. Um, the BBC now becomes the focus of, um, I suppose, everybody's um, um, investigations, including their own. Uh, it's not clear exactly what their investigation is going to try to discover or what it's going to try to, what it's going to, un, un, what it's going to uncover, really. What, what do you make of it all? Well, I mean, clearly there, there is nothing illegal here. Um, it's a behavioural issue and uh, it's been going on in private and it's whether or not someone's private life um, is should remain private. Yeah. Uh, the question is, is that when you are the, the nation's anchor, you are the voice for things as important as the death of the Queen, um, then unfortunately your standards have to be different. Um, but we still really don't know the full extent of it. I mean, his wife taking control of the situation yesterday by outing him and uh, giving his name. Um, and uh, as, as I predicted, um, the immense trauma for that family to face his accusations. And clearly he's talked about, you know, so let, let's face it, Mike, you and I remember a time when being sent to the Priory was a sort of escape route from negative publicity. Yes. Um, and it was, a, you, know, you know, sort of get out of jail free. But, it was, also, but it, was also, it was also usually for sort of recreational drug use, wasn't it? Well, whatever it was. I mean, there were people with you know, severe mental health problems as well. But I think it's true to say, and I think we need to be empathetic to somebody who really is struggling. And he's, he's done television programs on it. And people who know him talked about the sort of black dog that follows him. Yeah. Um, but the situation is we still don't know. And I, and I think that this is going to be a lot of questions about BBC procedure. Mm. It's much heavier procedure. If we look at that press conference at Tim Davey last week, I mean, it was heavily legal. And you felt that it was a bunch of under takers talking to the press you know i mean the, the severity was there but also now we know that it was hugh edwards and tim davy told the nation that he had not spoken to hugh edwards at that time which i think if it's your most prominent talent what does that say it suggests to me that you have some sort of you know protective um guard around you in terms of procedural thing that actually protects you from actually knowing stuff mm. and that indicates that i hope the bbc you know can come out of this by doing all the right things now i do have sympathy when the media agenda is is driven by social um and we all want to know and they're trying to give us the sort of facts and and stay between the legal lines and keeping this guy's privacy um but i mean are the bbc's procedural um you know guidelines and how they run things good enough for an age which is driven by social media and driven by thousands of other people who've got a very public platform to give their opinion. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. And I wonder about the likelihood that Jess Brammer uh, and Deborah Turness uh, are going to be out in front uh, and talking about this soon, because Jess Brammer is the editor of BBC News. Deborah Turness is the uh, News and Current Affairs chief executive officer brought in from NBC. Uh, you might remember she had a bit of a reputation over there for overprotection uh, of anchors and overprotection of of, of young uh, Mr. Williams in particular, uh, who got caught out in, in, in a series of lies, and he was the big NBC anchor. But you wonder what they knew and whether they knew anything, because it seems as though there was some kind of culture going on inside of the BBC newsroom um, where young people were routinely getting messaged by Hugh Edwards um, inappropriately, according to the BBC, um, and they're going to find out more and more about that. And you know as well as I do, Mark, people work in newsrooms, people know things who work in newsrooms because they're journalists and they find things out and they talk to each other. Now, you're not going to tell me that nobody knew that. Well, the, you know, again, Mike, this, this is what I think is going to happen. The facts will come out will gradually come out and we'll get a full picture when we get a full picture then we can we can talk about it and it might be a very difficult pill um for the bbc to 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 swallow mm. and of course it always comes down to the strength of talent if you have got a significant talent and he is significant by because of his pay packet and what he does um then unfortunately your life isn't quite 
And the same, if you if you'll sit there, you know, you know, delivering the sort of news, you're a person that people trust, and pe you know, he is the sort of make way of of the cadence doing the, the election for goodness sake. I'm afraid, you know, your your what you are and your values in private, unfortunately, will seep in to your public life. Now, libertarians might say that's that's not you know that that's that, 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 that's not the case that people should be able to do what they want in in their homes, and that is something that I think is probably right as well. But not when you're heralded as the the significant person. So they get then into this sort of you know this mire then of actually how far do we protect people? What do we do? You know how far do we get? The Sun obviously were compromised in what they could say, uh, what was um, interesting and what was of public interest, and so they come up with some half pregnant way of reporting this story, which you know as you will know maybe back in the eighties um, some heavier. Um, uh, editors would have pushed forward with the story. Mm. So everything about this has led to it creating an atmosphere of tittle-tattle, rumour and gossip, and everybody in the social media age has dived in, reputations have been trashed, people have been sucked into this who are innocent. It's been a complete and utter mess, and I don't think it's over until we get the full picture, and that's why I think everybody should be guarded and actually say at the moment, let's see what it all has to say about the way this is handled. In the meantime, there's a very damaged human being here, and my empathy is for him, and particularly his family, and it must have been just horrendous. No, I'm sure, but, you know, nobody's also asking the question, because, again, this becomes polarised politically, you know, and those people who detest the sun for their own reasons are, are blaming the sun for all of the things that have happened to him. You know, it may well be that the BBC suspended him in such a way that that was what pushed him over the edge. We don't know. Um, whether the BBC suspended him for the first allegations that, were kept, that came in on May the 19th or whether it was something else, you know, it's not very clear. So the BBC really has to clean up its, uh, its own house here before they start, you know, hurling abuse at anybody else. Well, I, I listen, there's some great journalists, son, and, um, you know, they are guided by principles. You know, the freewheeling uh, internet news sites, you know, can do what they want, you know, but you face Ofcom, newspapers, Ipso, they're regulatory bodies, keep an eye on them, and they're very responsible journalists, yeah. you know, it's a story, that's that's what it's all about. The, the issue for me is that, you know, is the 20th century procedures still in place with the BBC? Have they got into the 21st century? And the difficulties of managing the herd, the crowd, who are baying for blood on social media. And that for any organization is is tough. And as I said, there are thousands of influencers out there driving the story, working off the ether and not sitting back and thinking, you know. No, exactly right. You're just frozen up there for a second. Let's Let me go for it later. Yeah. Let me just read to you. I don't know if you saw Newsnight last night, but Newsnight had three individuals who complained about uh, unwanted attention from Hugh Edwards. Uh, one said this, that uh, uh, he was contacted on social media by Hugh Edwards. Messages left, left them feeling uncomfortable and awkward. The messages were reportedly suggestive in nature, appeared to be flirtatious and referred to his colleague's appearance. Uh, another employee said that uh, uh, they were left with a sort of cold shudder. They claimed they had received late night messages from Edwards um, that were signed off with kisses. Um, another complainant said that we never met him, uh, but he would send messages anyway. But they also all said we couldn't, we didn't feel that we could complain to the powers that be because uh, whistleblowing procedures were not really in place. Well, that's pretty serious because that shades of sable, then, isn't it? Yeah. If, if people. If people don't feel they can actually put truth to power um, in an organisation, that is an issue, if that is true. Um, well, this because... is Newsnight, BBC's supposedly flagship oh. political, you know, investigative programme, uh, doing an investigation into its own employees. So well, I, presume, be... I presume you have to trust <laughs> them, the don't you? That's been the most remarkable thing about it, Mike, isn't it? You know, the BBC's news eating itself mm. and actually showing its integrity, which it's to do. But... Look, I mean, it, 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 look, whichever way you look at this, this whole thing has been unedifying. It, it's it's not good um, for so many people involved with this. Um, and also the general public who sees 
on, you know, on, on feeding on, you know, half of all what is six people in the country knew about it. That shows that the uh, the way the way things are handled legally now is so much more difficult for people, and therefore it it shows the toxicity of fame. Um, that if you are getting a huge, you know, sort of wage packet, if you are, you know, the centre of attention, um, life isn't isn't simple. You mm. can't you can't conduct yourself as much as people claim they want to be, unless you're one of these influencers who looks totally transparent and shows every nook and cranny of their life and is quite happy to deal with the downside as well as the upside and i think that's what we're moving negativity and i think we all as a nation have to think about shame um this we're all human we all make mistakes uh, there should be no shame and if yeah. someone but there are supposed to be in most workplaces there are supposed to be um safeguards in place i mean i was watching piers morgan's show last night he was talking to a couple of newspaper and uh, former television executives who said that you know certainly in the us and in most private uh, media companies now there's such a thing as a sort of morality clause which suggests that you don't you don't i mean heaven forbid that you commit a crime uh, but you also do not bring the company that you uh, represent into some kind of disrepute it's a great day for lawyers great day for human resources and uh and, and anybody in that industry it really is it's very very complex these days employ people yeah got a breaking news story which i will leave you with hugh edwards conduct was being examined by bbc news journalists before the sun uh, sex picks claims according to uh, what i'm just seeing here um, and so it's deadline.com that's coming from. Um, Mark, good to talk to you. I'm sure we'll be talking again. Uh, I think this story is going to run and run, as they say. Uh, Hugh Edwards' conduct already was being examined by BBC news journalists before the Sun sex picks claim. Um, and, of course, last night, Newsnight anchor Victoria Derbyshire was examining, as I said, those accusations about uh, Hugh Edwards' conduct many, many, many months and weeks before the Sun uh, made those explosive claims. So we'll bring you more uh, on that revelation coming very shortly.